Hello, everyone. I want to thank you, thank the media for all your support and all your uh, inquiry into this case. Um, our ultimate goal at the Largo Police Department is to find Jordan and bring Jordan home. And I'd like to start today's uh, press conference by saying to anyone out there that knows where Jordan is, if anyone has Jordan, please take him to any safe place. A safe place is any fire station, any library, um, or any police station. We just want Jordan back safe. That's our ultimate goal. But I also would like to thank the members of the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, um, their child abduction response team. They have come out to help Largo Police Department and our investigators in this case. And with that team also is uh, Pinellas County Sheriff's Office has offered up their, their dive teams. You have seen them out today doing some work for us. And we also have several canine teams who, uh, from, from local um, groups that, that have come out to assist us today. I have next to me uh, FDLE Special Agent Supervisor John Scanlon. He is the commander of the CART team, and he, he is here today. His, his team is running up the logistical side of this investigation. Um, out in the field, you have seen quite a bit of activity at lakes and at buildings and things like that, but uh, there is a whole analytical component to this. Tips to follow up, we've received, I put out earlier a number, but we're currently at a little over 40 tips. All, all those have been run down by detectives, and those tips have come from across the state. Um, so we're, we're working with multi-jurisdictions multi in, order, in order to investigate those tips. But at this point, they haven't uh, revealed any specific um, information. Um, and what I would like to do today, if I can, is have, uh, can we go to the slide that has the map? I want to kind of walk you through how this case has developed and where, and where we are from the initial report. The mother of Jordan reports that in the far right, um, that, that's her apartment complex um, on East Bay Drive. The mother reports that she exited her apartment complex shortly thereafter on East Bay Drive, was offered a ride by a gentleman who later identified himself as Antoine, a black male subject, was a ride by a gentleman who later identified himself as Antoine, a black male subject with dreadlocks and gold teeth, who was driving a white Toyota Camry, and offered her and her child a ride. She accepted the ride, and she reported to us she accepted the ride because she had a long way to walk. She was walking to a friend's house, and Jordan was very heavy for her to walk that far. He drove her to, a, to about location B, which is in the area of Lake and East Bay Drive. At location B, that's where they um, had an altercation, and she reports to us um, that she was struck and lost consciousness. That is the last place that she has seen Jordan, was at that location, location B. Location A also is a, the, one of the last spots that we know Jordan was. So the activity you have seen today has been focused on those, those two locations. What we're doing is our due diligence in those locations out to Jordan. In so doing, we're, we're, and I, as I spoke to many of you individually, it doesn't indicate anything per se. What it is is us doing our due diligence and we can't go backwards in an investigation. We cannot, we need to get everything we can now so that as this case progresses, we have what, what we need to further investigate it. But to continue on the, on the original story and the premise that we're investigating, um, at, at spot B, it's believed that, uh, that George's mother came to, walked to, down to uh, this area here, which is Largo Central Park and this whole whole area right there. That'd be the Largo Central Park area. We do have video that shows her walking in the park. And so we, we are able to, to confirm that this, this timeline and this progression is how she arrived here. Oh, I probably just ruined your thing. Um, across the street from the, from the park is a uh, Hampton Inn, which is, the, which is the area right there with the thing. And that's where um, she walked across the street and requested 911 assistance. Uh, 911 responded. She was transported um, for non-life-threatening injuries, obviously, to Bayfront Medical Center, and she was treated. At this point, um, what I'm asking, what the department's asking for our residents is to, and I'm going to switch sides here. Okay. Well, this whole, this whole corridor along the, 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 the whole area in green, we're going to call that the East Bay Corridor. We have gone up and down the East Bay Corridor collecting um, video surveillance from businesses, 
um, and, and, and other entities that, that we were able to contact. What we're asking is for residents who may have their own security systems, maybe not so much on East Bay Drive, but maybe a little to the north, a little, little to the south, to take some time and go back and, and look at their video and let us know if they happen to see anything be between the times that, uh, that we're concerned with. And that's um, September 1st um, at 9.30 p.m. up to about September 2nd at 1.30 a.m. And in, in particular, we have already released that we believe it's a white Toyota Camry. And we can give you a photo of the, what that would look similar to. Um, we don't have, of course, the exact vehicle. But the one thing that the witnesses or the victims have told us is that that front grille is painted. So that makes it very much uh, that style. So, that, so anything that they would see something there, um, that would be great. Um, on their surveillance camera, let us know. Also, if they happen to see a black male subject or, of course, a small two-year-old two boy wandering around. Now I'd like to go to um, Special Agent Supervisor Jay Scanlon, just if he has any, anything to add about their, their running down of tips and anything that, uh, that you and me have Thank you, Major. Yep. Um, as Major described, uh, I'm responsible for the uh, regional CART team which is a child abduction response team for the Tampa Bay area. So I want to thank the Largo Police Department for allowing us the opportunity to come and help uh, locate Jordan. Our primary role here is really just to uh, facilitate resources for the Largo Police Department in locating Jordan. So we provide assistance uh, from local agencies, both investigatively and logistically, as well as uh, analysts from FDLE to help track leads and um, move information along so that the investigators have what they need uh, to help locate Jordan. Thank you. Yeah, and thanks to the help of FDLE and the CART team, we ha now have a, uh, a sketch of the subject that we believe to be Antoine. This is a sketch of Antoine. Um, we have uh, copies that we'll be able to, to release and we'll be able to send th things out, of course, in a PDF format. Um, at this point, anyone with information with a subject that looks like, like this gentleman here, and driving a white Toyota Camry, we would we would be very interested to get that tip. So Agent Scalin and his, Scalin and his team can run it down and see if maybe that's that's the one clue we're looking for. As we progress into the next uh, evolution of this of this investigation, um, start, starting tomorrow, we're going to continue more groundwork um, out looking at different areas in this in the city. Um, to make sure that you know there's not something dumped along along the road of, of evidentiary value or anything like that, so the public will see us out and about. But again, if the public would could take some time and re review their security camera and footage, and if you if you have something that you believe would be a benefit to us, feel free to contact 587-6730, and we we will definitely have an investigator can contact you and and take a look at that video. Um, again, we, we we very much appreciate all the work that the media has done, appreciate all the tips that have come in, all the caring thoughts for Jordan and his family, and our investigation will continue, and we will we'll work really hard. And with that, I can accept any questions. Well, Major, uh, we were, I was wondering, who's the last person other than his mother to see Jordan? I don't have that, I don't have that particular information. I, 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 don't, I haven't heard of anyone that, 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 has, that wasn't that, that, I, I don't know anyone. I believe that she is the only one that's seen him and for that for that day. Also, I understand like his grandmother would keep him sometimes. His father would keep him. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know if there was anyone else besides his mother who had seen him most recently. Not on that day. No. The, you say, the, not not the world. Not that I'm aware of. I don't believe so. Major, can you tell us when the last person? Can you tell us when the last time somebody other than the mother did see Jordan? I believe that would have been Friday, so that, that day would be Friday. The morning, afternoon? Night. I believe it was in the afternoon. I understand that uh, the mother has, uh, there have been other calls to that location, to her home, for other incidents. Can you elaborate a little bit more on what those calls were and what the incidents were? Sure. The, uh, the incidents that I was able to pull, just going back for this year, um, for 2018, were one, two, three, four, five, six to total incidents. Of those, two of them were, were follow-up calls where basically for, for some reason an officer needed to go out there and check on her based on something else that occurred, which were probably the two 911 hang-ups that we received from that location. There was also a battery um, that, that occurred at that, at that location. 
Um, and so there, there was an arrest made in that battery. Um, the, the battery arrest was for, for domestic violence. Um, Jordan, Jordan was not involved in that case. Yeah. Has DCF ever been involved with D any incidents with DCF her? is involved with, uh, with the mother, yes. Our, our C CPI. CPI. Yeah, yeah, they are involved, and that's where there was another call of assist of the other agency, and I believe that that assist other agency was us going out with CPI. Has there ever been any other concern for the child's safety other than right now? Not that I'm aware of. I know CPI does have a case on this uh, on this family, um, but you know it's not necessarily re relevant to what to what we're dealing with. Yeah. Neighbors tell us that uh, there were CPI investigators out there about a month ago with bullhorns trying to encourage the mother to come out of the house. Can you tell us about that? I can't tell you a whole lot because I don't don't have specifics, but I know that we, we were summoned out there to to assist them in in speaking with the mother. Yeah. And this may be the battery case you just referenced, but in July. There was an incident when the father brought Jordan home and the mother said, uh, I don't want him yet. An argument ensued and he punched her in the face. Is that the battery case you're talking about? There was a battery case on 7 14 in 2018. Right. And it also, that same report says there's a long standing history of domestic violence between these two parents. So what role and what, how does that play into your investigation? At this point, all factors are considered. All factors are are reviewed. At this point, there's there's nothing specific to um, focus on that that detracts us from looking for for Jordan right now. Is the mother pregnant? I don't, I'm not at liberty to say that only, only because I can't say for sure. Um, yeah. Major, can you talk about the video from the park? I mean, obviously, I haven't looked... seen the video, and I apologize for that. It's still still up in our operations section in the in the um, but from the video in the park. I don't believe it's overly, it's from, if you, if you get some time out there, it's from the building shooting out into the park. So I think they're able to put together that somebody's walking, but I don't know that it's, that it's of that I think, top quality. I think everyone has, the biggest question is that four hour period that the mother says she was unconscious. Explaining that, has she been able to explain that four hour blackout if you will of, we're still of focusing what, on that i mean that that's that, that's a key part of our investigation obviously because that that may be the area where we find that find that one clue and so that's where i get back to my timeline map of the of the roadway saying yeah that that pocket of time what happened in here and that's why we're starting to focus a little bit more time do we have anything more on that no i mean the story continues to be that you know i, I don't recall anything that happened in there because i was knocked out because I, I would assume, for all we know, the she and the child could have been dropped off there and in that period. And, and that's where our focus lies with ma making sure that we're checking the, these areas as best we can. Um, you know, we do have our own uh, teams out looking, but obviously if somebody sees something suspicious or something that, uh, that they could call us about, we'd love to come out and take a look. How consistent, how consistent are the mother's injuries with someone who was knocked unconscious for a four-hour period? She does have a wound to to her head, which which could sustain somebody losing the consciousness. A concussion? She didn't. I don't believe she has a concussion, but I don't know her medical condition. She went to the hospital. She, she she went to Bayfront Medical Center. Yes. So her injuries are consistent with someone who was knocked out for four hours. I believe if somebody struck in the head, that they, they they could be knocked out. Do do I know if she was knocked out for for four hours continuously? I don't know, but she she does not recall anything for that four hours. We're also hearing from neighbors, and this is completely unconfirmed, that, that you're recovering evidence, bloody evidence, from inside that apartment. We're collecting anything and everything that may be of value in, in our case. Evidence that neighbors or someone may, may see com coming out doesn't necessarily mean that that is relevant to our investigation. Have you found bloody clothing inside? We have the found some, some bloody items, yes. Exactly. Were they belonging to Jordan? We don't know. We don't even know how long they've been, there, been around. It's not like they were. Uh, you know what you would were they probably, found in the apartment or in the dumpster because some neighbors said some stuff was taken from the I'm not sure exactly but you know it was at that apartment complex. Can, can you elaborate on what divers are looking for because it looks like they're being very meticulous in that pond looking for something can you elaborate on what they might Well the pond for? itself is is just right right behind the apartment and like 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 we're talking we need to be cautious right we need to make sure that maybe something else didn't happen and the and Jordan walked outside and you know f fell into the pond so we, we need to look in that pond. The manner in which the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office died team were, were lucky in, in this county to have them there 
spot on with how to do their, do their job. What you're seeing is what I believe they call a grid search. So they can't just, you know, start search searching. They got to do it systematically. So I think you're seeing that. How deep is that pond? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sounds like she has a, a trouble past. Is her story holding up? At this point, she is she is continuing to do a cooperate. Yeah. Is there a countywide database that you can look for known aliases of Antoine, Antoine or similar aliases? Yeah, the FDLE and analysts um, throughout the fusion centers are, are obviously providing us that that support. Is the search at the pond over with at this point for tonight? I believe the searches are are done for the evening. I think the uh, the, the weather negated much can more happen. Can you talk about the resources that Largo Police, FDLE, Pinellas County Sheriff's Office are are using to end this search? It looks like it's massive. It, we we are use, utilizing all resources available. Obviously, uh, you know, when a child's missing, um, our, our number one goal is to find that child. We all know the, the statistics and we all know the, the, the parameters. We are outside of 24 hours, which, uh, which raises even more concerns to us that we haven't heard something, haven't seen something, haven't found something. Um, but on the other side, yes, we have all members of the Largo Police Department are involved in this case. Every member of the Investigations Bureau have worked tirelessly with little sleep um, FDLE has provided upwards, I think, I think I counted like eight or nine people just just today. On top of that, there's several agencies that, that have brought in folks on the CART team. Um, so yeah, it's becoming extensive, yeah. Is it troubling that two days into this investigation, you've gotten very, not very far in finding out where this little boy is? No evidence, no clues, 20 tips. I mean, it seems like it would be frustrating. I was I would say it's frustrating because we're keeping a positive attitude because we are going to find Jordan. That is that is our goal. That is what we're here to do. Um, but I will say that uh, we we need some help in to, from, from our public. That's why we're asking them take take a look at, at your video, see if you see something that that may helps help us out. And go, going back to some of the other questions you've been asking, some sometimes we're looking to find not find evidence, right? So sometimes when you see us at areas looking around, we're looking to not find evidence at the, at the home. We're looking to not find evidence too. And so uh, it's sculptory stuff. And so yes, we are, we're, we're actively putting all resources to it. A reward, has a reward been accumulating or anything? For I'm not aware of any award. I think that uh, that might be our next ventures as, as the days come that we may need to start to go to those, yeah. Given the father's uh, history of altercations and, and domestic battery with the mother, are you satisfied that he was not involved in some sort of incident? He, he, he has cooperated with, with investigators and he, he provided um, an, an alibi for, for where he was that was verifiable. Have you asked the mother to take a polygraph? We have not, no. What, what's been the mother's demeanor over the last two days? Kind of tell us what she's been... Her demeanor, the best I can uh, say it in one, one word is overwhelmed. I think she's overwhelmed with what's what's going on. She's relatively young. I think you all know she's 21 years old, I believe. Um, she she's she's re relatively young, and this is probably a little bit more than uh, she was ready to have happen. Yeah. Is she? Uh, we were hearing reports that she was on the verge of being evicted from her apartment. Do you? She know? she is a struggling single mother. Yeah. Does she work? I don't believe so. Mm -hmm. Also, we're reaching that 48 hour. Uh, I'm sorry, we're reaching that 48 hour point. How concerning is that? I know that's critical. I mean, I, it's always concerning. You know, I mean, I've been I've, I've been doing this job for 20, 20, 23 years, and in that time, I spent a lot of time in the in the child abuse area. And the CART team was something that that we started up after you know the, some of the unfortunate cases that happened in Florida in, in like 2007 and things. But uh, I, I won't say it's frustrating. I, or, or I just would say right now. We're just ready for that big break. You know, we think that big break's coming. We're, we're, we're doing our diligence, and we're going to keep at it, and we're not going to get discouraged, and we're not going to stop. So regardless of what it looks like, regardless of what it sounds like, we're going we're gonna to find Jordan. And so sometimes we may come off that uh, we're, we're not providing the information, but we just don't have the information right now to provide. G given that your best leads are coming from the mother, why haven't you asked her to take a polygraph, and, and are you going to do that? I would think that that, that was part of the invest that may be part of the investigative plan going forward, but I'm just not aware of that I'm not in the I'm not in the investigation side. JJ, you have something? Uh, so some people on Facebook were saying that Jordan was sick or had a seizure. A seizure. 
seizure the other day, and that um, she was upset about that, and they think that's what kind of led to this and turned him by being sick from the hospital. Yeah, I'm not I'm not privy to the specifics on on his medical conditions in the past. Sorry. Are there is there any possibility of doing any? I know you've been focusing today on the apartment complex, the pond, and the intersection where they were picked up by Antoine. Mm -hmm. Is there any, are you going to be expanding from that? Are you starting to look in any other areas? Are those just the first two you're going to begin with? Or just well, again, again, our focus is always going to be where, where we have a belief that he was, right? And so at this point, those are the two lo locations that, that we have a strong belief that, that he was. Um, and we'll, we'll continue that until the, that's exhausted. If anything else should should come to light that we could that we could look into our areas, we would. I mean, I think we, we might expand those areas a little bit tomorrow and the next days as our as our troops come come back to work from the holidays. We might check a few a few, few more areas that maybe are kind of outside the uh, realm, but just, just to be safe. Any other waterways? Late? I see there are some other bodies. Yeah, that, of water that's, you're you're talking. Uh, there's a park in that area. There's a there's a large. From the bee we're speaking. Um, there's there's a large Florida power area um, there, Florida power station, and uh, we were talking today that maybe that that might be an area we, we might do a walk. But on the just to be clear too, all of these areas have been searched by helicopters and things. So you know we're, we're again we're going to do our due diligence and we're going to we're going to continue to look. Make just, sure. just to clarify, where was she knocked unconscious? At B, which is Lake in East Bay. That's where she. That's where she. Uh, reports she was she came to in the park yes that's that, that's what she reported to us that she somehow now do, does that mean that she came to be honest do, you know does that mean that she came to there and she, she doesn't remember the walk possible but but at, the, at this point we don't know anything more than what she has told us and that she was knocked out there and recovered at the park and directly got assistance across the street at any point do you think there will eventually be a shoulder to shoulder force march, if you will, just to go fan across the area there, just to see and find anything. Yeah, yeah, I do think there, there will be, yeah. Any idea of when that might? I would think it might occur as soon as, as, soon as tomorrow or the next day. Um, I think it, it, we might be at that point. Again, every morning we're meeting, having briefings and, and trying to allocate resources to where we think they'll be most effective. What's Has anybody talked to the father yet? Or? The father has been has been talked to and interviewed, and he has been cooperative. Are they still in the apartment complex right now? Where are they? I'm sorry, I didn't. They were, are they still in the apartment complex right now? Are they? At that home they they were staying at at alternate location. Okay. The, yeah. Can you just say the mother's name? I don't. I, I'm not the liberty to release that based on the case we're investigating. Thanks. You, you mentioned you had video from the park location that corroborated that she was there four hours later. Do you see her walking to the park at that point, or do you see a vehicle? Again, I, I don't have the specifics from the uh, from the operation side, but I do, do know that there is video showing her up and about walking. So I don't know if that's walking in, walking out, or what. But. Are there are there traffic cameras along East Bay there? There may be. I don't know the traffic cameras are something that are captured. I don't believe they are. And uh, we do not have access to tra traffic cameras at this point. It, yeah. We heard that she was in witness protection and that she had been receiving death threats. Is there anything to that? Was there any I never heard anything like that. Yeah. Is there any reason to believe someone wants to harm her or a child? Uh, you know, I don't know who's who's out there on Facebook and who, who's out there saying things, but I can tell you flat out, you know, witness protection, no. Now, the mother contacted us on our website, on Bay News 9's uh, Facebook page, and messaged us telling us that she did not say that she was unconscious for four hours. Okay. Your response to that? And that's what she told us. Are you going to release the video from the park? I, I kind of hope to do, do that tomorrow. I need to I need to get through some operation side, but I, I'm thinking that might be a good value. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you